Welcome to New Eden, Traveller. I'm Katya Say, and I'll be your guide on this journey of exploration. Over the course of my near decade of travel around the cluster, I saw things that I had only dreamed about as a child. Sights that left me in awe of the beauty and majesty that is New Eden, and the crushing devastation that humanity could bestow upon themselves and others. There were many who inspired me along my journey, but only one I aspired to be like, Mark 726 of Eve Treble. His hollow blog was a terrific guide to every new region I encountered, and I hope to bring it to life for you in this series. Join us as we explore and share with you some of the most fascinating sights the cluster has to offer, from humanity's humble beginnings to whispers of tales shrouded in mystery that have become near legend. I hope you'll join us in this endeavor to explore our universe together. Somewhere, something wonderful is waiting to be found. And you're live. Welcome to Talking Stations, uh, a show about EVE Online. I'm your host today, Shen, um, alongside with our engineer slash panelist, Nick Bison. Hey, good evening, everybody. Yeah, so we missed the show last Wednesday, but we're back this Wednesday. So uh, to start things off, as always uh, on Wednesdays, I'm going to look at some of the war updates or some activities that's happening in NOSEC. Uh, so first thing, uh, we're going to start with Cloud Ring. Uh, how's that? So in Cloud Ring, uh, fights continue between Triumvirate and Imperium. Yeah, so it's very hard to see, right? Because uh, the color for both initiative and tri triumvirate is also is both blue, uh, for their uh, iHub. So, yeah, I think we're gonna just work with what we have. But uh, we're seeing more and more Imperium iHubs, all right, uh, getting installed. We're seeing some range regiments iHub here, all right? So um, they're still fighting, and then this fight's still on in this part. It looks like down south there's uh, four systems that uh, have none at this point. And those were the ones that French Connection had, wasn't it? weren't they? Uh-oh, did I lose you, Shen? All right, you're going to have to suffer through me for a moment or two till uh, Shen gets up. Um... But yeah, French Connection had them. They dropped out uh, on the 13th, just a couple days ago. So it could be part of their move. They might be relocating for all we know. And there's also up north, north end of Cloud Ring, is a bunch more that are uh, been, been dropped out. Uh, no iHubs listed at all. They were part of try so this might be our our next push area or conflict area just don't know um you know uh oh shen did you get a fleet ping maybe i don't know there you are we <laughs> yeah, got you back i think just discord doing discord or things Oop. I'm back. Sorry. All right. There you go. Yeah. All right. So, Continue, good sir. Uh, I think I heard um, part of that. Uh, yeah. So, sounds good. <laughs> yeah. So, we're still. Uh, so, I think uh, for now, the Imperium's uh, objective in this uh, theater here is basically secure Cloud Rain. Um, uh, either for French connection, but we're not seeing French connection here. So, maybe we have some other. Um, objectives or other plans for this region we don't know yet but fight is still on uh, right here yeah so with this one out of the way we're gonna look at somewhere else up in the north uh, so this time uh, pure blind has is still um, quiet without any like major major fights that we have seen before like dropping down 40 hours uh, like fights contesting them but uh, 
one big um, area right now is in the Forge, actually. So in the Forge, uh, as we all know, Forge is like the region that Cheetah is located. So next to it is Veil of the Silent, right? It was the home of fraternity. And in Losek Forge, there's also Snuff present. So the clash of the two big lines uh, can often result in lots of big, big fights. I guess one of those things we kind of glossed over temporarily there in, in uh, Pure Blind is that that one former Banderlog staging is now a brave eye hub in that constellation. Yeah, yeah. So um, as a forge is a, a big theater, but also like actually, I think there's an, that system is located in Long Trek, like Old Tassai. Um, so that system is a system that's next to both Tribute and the Forge. Uh, so you can just go to Otasai. So it's in Long Track. Oh, oh Tati, gotcha. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. So right yeah, right there. So in there, Snuff dropped uh, attempted to drop a forge, but Frab brought their hacks and uh, destroyed the fork when it got deployed. So here is a trick, which is there's a deploying temp timer and there's an anchoring timer. So deploying timer is when you just drop the fork, there's like a 15 minute timer, I think, uh, uh, that which it, the fork can start doing the anchoring thing. And then the anchoring will come out 24 hours. After that 24 hour time period, you can then put in the core and then it's gonna start repair and then and then the fork is gonna be online, right? So for Frapped uh, spotted uh, that Snuff was putting one down and then they basically paying like crazy uh, to get enough hacks um, to to destroy that fort. Though they destroyed it, they paid a heavy price too uh, in that battle. Um, I don't, I can't, I can't find the battle report that I think the, on the Frapped side, they lost about 40 some billion to the Snuff, including the 40s are about 12 billion loss. So it's a heavy price to pay for the first attempt that Snuff did uh, over the last week to drop down a fort in that system. Well, that being said, there's a second attempt as well. So the second time that initiative actually came over to assist. Uh, so we can also see that on um, that BR that I, can't, I just can't really find. Uh, but this time the Ford was successfully uh, well, deployed and anchored, um, I think. And then um, Frad also lost a bunch of uh, hacks there too. So uh, we are definitely, definitely seeing lots, lots uh, of uh, a lot of uh, content up here in Long Trek, uh, in low sec, uh, which is not where like big, big battles over price of 50 billion that we normally see like happening somewhat regularly, right? Before it's like we were waiting, waiting for half a year and then boom, um, some big uh, low side keeps start getting kicked out and then both side bring dreads capitals to fight them and we're seeing those those like big big brs um everywhere but this time um it's just this two battles happened almost uh you know in a week of time so it's uh, it's really uh very con consistent with those fights now do we know the reason um <clears throat> you know they want to get that fort in there what's what's the objective is it to cut well, and cut them off from uh, the easy route in and out to Jida, or what do we know well it's not more to stop fraternity it's more like another step for snuff so actually that uh in that from that system you can project uh, heavily into veil to silent so that means um, capital, capital, um, capital ratting or super capital ratting may not be the safest thing to do, right? And then world calls, who knows, right? Not only capital ships, but let's say if they can just uh, let up a sino and then put in like a sub capital fleet, right? So you a lot of tribute, especially here, um, that that's being affected by this uh, place, by, by this region. So black ops, right? There's also uh, stuff that can uh, jump through uh, portals. Yeah, that's got some good coverage. That's for sure. Yeah, and then if you just take a few gates, right? Um, uh, take into the forge, and then that's also another big spot where you can t uh, t 
drop uh, a lot of uh, ships through there. Yeah, so when we talk about consistent warfare, um, up in the north is not the only theater, uh, but what's more consistent is actually fighting down south. Uh, so here we have uh, our battle report uh, of the week. <laughs> Uh, so this one happened in PDF uh, in Tenerife. So uh, we can, as we can see in the time, right, 1200 to 1500, this is really, really uh, AOTZ, right? This is not anything that's uh, remotely similar to USDD, maybe very, very early uh, UTZ. So uh, that's why we're seeing a lot of uh, AOM involved in this, uh, in this fight. So that's um, our time zone. So in this fight, uh, its objective was uh, uh, XX or fire coalition, or nowadays we should call it a tire. It's a tire coalition dropping down a forty star in that system in Tenerife, um, and then it's the anchoring timer that's uh, that's out. And uh, basically, uh, we came in to try to kill it, but. Uh, well, we, we kind of the ma uh, numbers, as we can see, matches on uh, both sides. But uh, what's uh, different here is Fraternity actually showed up in their uh, Blaster Harpy fleet. So those fleets provide a decent amount of DPS for sure. But what's more scary of them to hacks is their ability to tackle ships, right? To web them, uh, to, to get to get the uh, monitor slow down and stuff like that. Um, and then basically tackle all those like um, links to uh, tackle those Hugens, broadsword, all that stuff. Uh, so uh, the the objective at the end was won by the fire and the fraternity side. So the fort was uh, successfully unlined, um, and uh, yeah, and then we. The, the trade was actually kind of even uh, from both sides, from the AOM side and the uh, fire plus or the tire plus um, fraternity side. See a lot of obviously munins online again here. So that's still a solid doctrine for both sides. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, with munins, I'm still one of the best uh, NOSEC doctrines, especially with numbers like this. Uh, I mean, with a bit more numbers, I think uh, Eagles can perform um, uh, to a similar level. Uh, but it's, uh, from what we're seeing right now, it's uh, definitely just munings and munings. <laughs> I mean, they also travel fast and far, right? So you think about it, um, AOM based in Esoteria, and this fight is all the way up in Tenerife, right? There's going to be a lot of traveling involved. So Hax is uh, one of the safest thing to bring. Um, bring battleships is an option. It's very tough, right? With those warp speed, with those align time. Uh, but another thing with those um, two downside is the ability to get tackled or to be caught on a gate, right? Uh, when you're traveling in Osec, that's one of uh, the, the things that you have to consider. Yeah, so any last thought on this segment, uh, Nick? Well, I'm just looking at that going, you know, that's a pretty even slugfest back and forth. Not, you know, horrific losses on either side, but relatively even force sizes, you know, trading ships pretty evenly. So it actually looks like they had a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, this is a non sec fight that, well, I didn't have time for this one, but... This is the kind of fights that I will actually very much be enjoying uh, in fighting with, right? You're seeing not too many people, right? About 150 to 200 people on each side. So that means not like max 10% tie-dye. So it's actually kind of enjoyable. Uh, you're not seeing just a slight show in front of you happening. Um, and, uh, and then it's basically fair trade, right? Now, you mentioned they, you know, the, the goal was the anchoring of a Fortizar there in uh, PDF tech uh 3z is that a strategic move in or a harassment move i'm thinking with a fort someone's trying to take space well yeah i, I think uh fire or i mean at this point tire coalition is definitely um uh, trying to anchor that as a strategic uh, staging uh for for their well, semi-new coalition. So for people who are not aware at this point, uh, Tire Coalition, uh, as someone may guess it, uh, is a sub-coalition type of thing for Fire Coalition. It's basically, I think, their USTZ. Uh, 
yeah, so that involves, um, I don't have the full concrete list, but uh, some of the names I've heard is like already replaced Severance, um, Valkyrie, yeah, those alliances. And, you know, if they get that anchored in there, you're looking at, again, some respectable uh, cap jump and range all in that area. Yeah, especially into impasse at the at the top there, right? And that's, uh, I mean, it's a fort, so it's, it has the capability of uh, docking uh, capitals, right? Dreads, carriers, all that stuff. So dread bombs is one of the possible things that you can do. Yeah, so with all of that out of the way, uh, last thing around um, like movements and stuff like that is uh, we're seeing an alliance called Evictus um, disbanding. Uh, so uh, Evictus, um, as people may know, uh, is a North like, um a, alliance um, that started in, I think, 2012. Um, and they started in probably block. Yeah, so they're uh, so uh, they were first aligned with probably block, and then when Lexi come along, they tag along uh, in Fifth Apollos uh, in Legacy, and that's when actually AOM become neighbor with Evictus. Um, so when we were used to live in Omist, which is next door to them, uh, so we've been neighbors for about uh, a year and a bit, and after that, the big war started, uh, as many of us know, and then uh, they were also. Uh, on the Pappy side. But after the war, uh, we joined up, our AOM and Evictus joined up, uh, and then Vindictive right now, um, Paper is also kind of blending in um, to form the PIBC coalition. Uh, after about like half a year of working together, um, uh, right now they're disbanding. So we saw a message from um, uh, their like alliance CEO uh, Francis uh, saying uh, basically the story well not the story is basically family commitment uh, and then uh, nobody really have actual like time uh, in the leadership level to take over so uh, let's just call it a day um, I, 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 th I think this is um, or I think it's like for me, um, as as a player in AOM, um, this so like a, the best analogy that I can give is like there's a, a friend that you grew up with uh, from a, a primary school, secondary school, and now you're both, and then you're you're going to go to the local university, but this person or this friend of yours uh, is going to somewhere else far uh, from the city, and. Um, you know you're gonna see each other sometimes uh, in the future, uh, but it's just an old friend that's uh, going to somewhere else. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so. they, they're uh, you know they're they're still holding a lot of space in the esoteria, a little bit in faith, <clears throat> and in a system in Paragon Soul. Um, don't know if that's gonna turn into a land grab or you know as they start going away. The other thing I was looking at is also in reading the. Uh, alliance executor for lack of a better term you know that they discussed it with all the ceos of the cores they know what's going on and you know there's a pretty solid crew i mean I, i'm my guess is the ceos are either looking for a new home or you know i don't think they're going to go out well heck they could form their own thing who knows um but they'll be looking for doing what's right for their folks yeah, um, I mean, we're definitely seeing, I mean, even though uh, uh, Francis may be retiring uh, from leadership, but we're definitely seeing these corporations, we're going to see them somewhere else, right? They're still active players in those corporations, so maybe they're going to some other alliances, um, right? Uh, so they're not, those players are not going away from the game. Uh, but some of them may take a break, right? This is the holiday season. Usually, this is the time uh, where family gets together. So we may not see uh, the highest number, but uh, we're definitely going to see uh, people. Uh, we're, we're definitely, from my uh, perspective, we're gonna definitely going to see those similar IDs showing up on grid, no matter it's friendly or not. <laughs> 
Yeah, so uh, last thing I would say is just best wishes to everyone uh, from Evictus. It was an awesome experience flying with you guys, uh, no matter if it's in Legacy or PIPC. Uh, I wish you guys the best and um, see you guys in the future on Grid. <laughs> yeah, so with all that, uh, we're going to move on to our market segment, actually, of the week. So as we all know, the uh, from extraction to production patch uh, came through uh, last Tuesday. So that's a patch that changed uh, mining barges, the uh, pressure, uh, what's it called, the pressure due right now, uh, the waste mechanic, basically. And um, all of that uh, right now is being actually on TQ. Uh, so with all of that, uh, Right now, what we're seeing is uh, the, I would say the new item, it's like the only new thing, uh, item uh, in the game, which is the large industrial core, right? So a T1, T2 version. Right now, it's a building cost for a T2 version of uh, the large industrial core 2. So this is a core that goes on the Orca, not the Roco. So the Roco, well, what was the industrial core, the industrial core uh, before the uh, last Tuesday's patch was called the industrial core. But now there are two versions of that. One right? is called the capital industrial core, which is the one that's being used on Rocos. Uh, there are also this one, which is called the large industrial core. This is the one that goes on workers. So with this one, uh, uh, with this one, the building cost is around like 108 billion. Um, the buying material is about 97. So I will give it a solid about 120 20 million, uh, right? With uh, with the cost for BBC uh, copies and for T2 BBCs, all that stuff, 120 billion. But if you, this is the building cost, but if you look at markets, so this is where things get very, very interesting. Um, so if you look at markets, right now so hang on i'm pulling I'll, I'll pull your stream up here yeah so i'm currently in jita and this is the large industrial core too and the price is just like everything else is has a significant margin when just it, when it's first introduced you know one thing i did not look at was on the invention side um invention materials, the data cores, and how many are needed. Because that's, they're not terribly expensive, but that does add to cost. And if they're using any uh, of the modifiers with it, that'll, that'll jump a few extra ISK on it. going to be anywhere near the price that we're seeing right now, what, right? Like seller is going for 200 plus million for each one and buyer is going for 163. I mean, this is the same thing for just new stuff. Uh, it's just, just like the most, another example I think about is the price of a Thunder Child, right? When you first come out, when it first came out, well, the price was low compared to now because of the industrial change that happened in April, but that was, it was really high uh, for the first few days. So I think um, it's going to take some time, but the price should eventually be lowered uh, than what is it right now. It's, it's only been uh, a, a bit more than a week. So it's just definitely going to be room for the price of this one going to, uh, to cool down. Yeah, so with this one, um, some of the more... Um, Things that people can remember uh, for to to got uh, that got changed from last week's patch will be the mining barges. So here we come. Uh, here we come. So this is the one for the counter. So we can see the trend uh, really uh, at at the uh, tail end here uh, in the beginning of December, well, in the mid midst of December when the announcement of that um, of the death block actually came out. Right, so we started with a death block and the forum post and then the actual patch alongside with the final death block. So I think that's around the time where the first uh, death block was out. And people can start seeing what CCP wants to do with the barges, right? To really buff them in, term, in terms of both the EHP and their mining ability, right? With the different type of miners and uh, strip miners and different type of crystals. So that's what we're seeing. That's why we're seeing a spike in both volume and price. All right. So we're yeah. not seeing like the biggest spike yet uh, that we saw back in the days, but this is definitely going up. Yeah, I think, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head on, on part of that is when they first dev blog first came out, 
folks looked at it and went, oh, Coveter is not going to be a complete paper tank anymore, so it's going to be useful. And, uh, you know, solid mining, it, respectable tank. It's not going to be the put, it's not going to be the uh, two catalyst pushover. You're going to have to bring three or four now. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's why we're uh, seeing the volume spike, right? Coverters and the archers are not like rocals, right? Uh, they, right now, after the patch, they, might, they may mine a similar amount, but you can definitely multi-box more archers than uh, their rocals. Well, some people may argue other ways, but as of right now, I think that's one of the most lucrative way to mine stuff, at least for the moons uh, in Austin. Yeah, so and the, is, the Retriever, did it pop up in price much? So, gonna do the trend. Yeah, so we can see the, at the end right there, uh, the spike both in volume and in, uh, in price too. So, this is yeah. not the craziest. Yeah. Yeah, that's not the craziest um, price we've seen over the year yet, I think. But uh, it's definitely a big spike uh, be compared to, let's say, November, which is before the death block. Yeah, I don't think it's going to go too crazy because I think folks are going are stepping in slowly into this patch as they're looking at it. Um, earlier, you and I were, were talking about the Exumer side, and the skiff took a beating and uh on the price wise so that was i didn't expect that as much as it happened actually i expected the procure to take a beating because it's uh lost a good chunk of its tank so they got the progression of the ships cut literally back to where they were quite a few years ago with procure being that entry level does okay a little bit of you know fair tank and then the retriever a little more and cover her even more solid. Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, was was the retriever right? It's the thing that can mine or has the biggest hole, uh, world hold, but not necessarily the best at mining. Uh, while we're looking at the procure for people who don't really know uh, why the retriever got uh, the price is not as significantly spiking as the others uh, is because Procure didn't get as much of a buff uh, as Covered and the Retriever. And so right now the Procure have, uh, I believe, two miss slots, just like the Skiff. Uh, where is it? Oh, right Skiff is three. I th no. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so, so two miss slots. So originally it has four. So right, it lost two miss slots for one low slot. So that means the tank on the procurer is not going to be as significant uh, as what they used to have uh, back in the days. Uh, with those four miss slots, you can really fit a really, really a beefy tank. Uh, so that's why things like battle procurers exist, right? Uh, all the nuts like hitting people all over the place, right? Those poor um, headkids dying uh, under the guns of procurers or the jones of procurers. Uh, but those days may not be ended necessarily yet, but we're definitely seeing a nerve to that kind of playstyle with uh, them on the miss loss that's been well. Although, you know, they're, they're, just gonna, they're just gonna have to get a little more creative with how they do it. Yeah, I there's still some crazy people out there. They're gonna go, all right, my former battle procurer may not be the hot ticket, but boy, it should be a nice bait ship. Yeah, think about it is right, we have three low slots. What's that mean? Hulk tanking. Always. <laughs> so maybe we're going to see some some of being crazy, right? Transversal bow heads uh, on the uh, uh, on the rigs, and then uh, and then re uh, and reinforced bow heads on the uh, bow heads uh, on the low spots, right? Max uh, yeah, yeah, HP yeah. in the hull. <laughs> yeah, jump over to the attributes real quick and uh, the, the drone drone bandwidth. Let's take a look at that up at the very top. So, yeah, the capacity is 100, but the bandwidth is 50. So you can still throw out, you know, five mediums. That That's going to hurt somebody's feelings if you get a couple together. Yeah, I, I can't wait for those, like, people put newts at the top of uh, and high slots, like, 
a bait two tank in the mid and then whole tanking in the in the low slot and then five uh t2 combat wings wrecking those hackers going around uh, yeah so. hey uh support only in chat since he already did that are you referring to the uh hull tank in that bad boy if you get a chance type an answer in there you got me curious now yeah so i mean with uh with armor right uh, um a damage control and it was six thousand hp to start with it's not bad uh but So as a procurer, um, uh, it was the money barges, but now we're going to look at some of the exhumers. Uh, so to start off with, we're going to look at the T2 version of the cover turn, which is the Hawk. So Hawk right now with the buff of a rule called boosting, you can actually mine, to, in, it depends on what kind of things you mine, but you can to, to some degree mine better than a rule uh, uh, with its strip miners. So just like what we saw in the barges, we're seeing a spike in both volume and in price. So actually, right now, uh, Hawk is hitting its one-year high uh, price, uh, counting around, um, going around about uh, 360 million for a unit. And then we're seeing about like 200 units being sold. Um, is uh, some crazy numbers in the volume that we have not seen uh, for the majority of uh, the past year. And I get, you know, it's fair to mention is everybody goes, oh, it outmines a Rourke. That is, if it has a Rourke boosting, it'll it'll outmine it. Without that, they're fairly comparable. I'd have to run the exact numbers, but from the last time we discussed it and looked at it, it like just barely outperforms it but it, it'll really shine when it gets a, a solid rock booster on it um also i mean hawk not only rock can boost but in high tech work can boost as well um so it's definitely um, a ship that if you're just solo miner you may need you may can uh, need to consider right now if let's say if you can't mine anymore uh in rock or in or this can be definitely an option for you. Uh, it's much cheaper compared to the Orc and the Roku, but what it lacks is um, the amount of EHP that you you may have um, on your workers in high sec at least uh, for for gank. Yeah, so we're still seeing like four mid slots and three low slots. Um, you can you can fit like a decent amount of tank on the hawk, uh, but again, it's not as safe what as what it used to be uh, sitting in work in high tech. So other than the hawk, we're gonna look at the two the two brother of the retriever, which is the Mackinac. So which I got to I got to I got to jump in. This is my favorite one of the exhumers, and you know for a number of reasons. But I just had to throw that out there first. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I mean this is your favorite, why don't you explain to us what, why it's your favorite and then uh, why it's in my favorite? What, what is, all right, all right I'll, I'll try and keep it fairly short. Um, the biggest boon it got, in addition to obviously mining considerably more, uh, you know, with this patch, and I've been using the uh, T2A crystals right now because I'm a lazy bastard. Um, is the ore hold with your max skilled went from, or excuse me, the mining hold now went from 35,000 M3 up to 44 and change. So, and tank wise, you know, you can put a respectable tank as long as you're not, as long as you're not one of those crazies that wants to put nothing but uh, mining upgrades in your lows and you throw tank down there. Uh, if you've got a, Orca in support, you don't need a rock scanner. So your mids can be, you know, solid tank action. And it, you get pretty solid, you know, game with that. And it's, uh, I've survived a number of uh, gank attempts by up to four catalyst at one shot trying to take down a Mackinac. But then again, I do have an Orca in support that pre-locks everybody and has a uh, remote shield wrapper. So, you know, 
you get a you know three or four Mackinaws out there with an orca in support, and you're looking at you're going to be pulling in if you fill everybody's holds, everybody's, then you're looking at you know 435, 440,000 M3, and it takes me about 38 minutes to do that. So that yeah, you can do some mining. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then you can also have K the most, right? In back it all. Uh, it's one of the largest warhold uh, on barges uh, in general. So what we're seeing right here is just uh, 31.5K uh, in a mining hold. But uh, what actually happens is the mining hold ca uh, capacity is going to increase uh, in both the mining purchase uh, skill bonus and the exhumer skill bonus. So I think Nick, you said about 42,000 at the end? 44.3 thousand M3. Oh, yeah, 44.3K. Um, I think that's a very, very high number, to be honest. Uh, for barge, you can pretty much sit in there for a lot of cycles uh, before the war hold is uh, is full, uh, and then you have to pump in the war and then uh, doing all that mining logistics stuff. Well, and I've also noticed, you know, from talking with a couple other folk, um, the, another one of the reasons they like it. Yet, yes, that Hulk is going to outmine the piss out of you, but you're doing a lot more dragon, and if you're running multiple clients, you know, you may want to stagger that time out just a tad but uh you know it works for a lot of folks yeah i mean also with this patch the hulk also got above in its uh work or mine hole capacity right now so maybe it's gonna somewhat solve that problem uh but uh, we have to see if there's gonna be more ma uh, machinals or more hawks on field yeah, but one thing that's uh, also got somewhat of a, is I should, I should say a nerf, but not as much of a buff uh, as we saw for the other two exhumers, which is the skiff. Uh, so unlike any other ships that we have seen so far in the mining barges section, that this is the only one that still have a downward trend in terms of price. So. Of the others, for example, the Hulk, we're seeing a spike in both volume and in price. Uh, but right here in the skiff, volume stays similar and the price is actually going down. Uh, and that actually kind of surprises me. And, and I know along with the, uh, and one of the folks, I think it was Gator in uh, chat mentions that the procure, you know, uh, mass increased and speed decreased. So the align is a lot longer now part of that carries over onto the skiff uh, but the skiff did lose one mid i believe and for a lot of folks that were had a rock scanner in that mid yeah so what you know uh, you can drop that and you know have somebody be the designated literally target caller that's what a mining foreman is for uh, and then this uh, skiff right now is definitely like, still like the tankiest uh, exhumers out of all, right? We're seeing so the six percent increase per level of mining barges to shield hit point, and then four percent to all shield resistance to, per exhumer level, right? That's some serious, serious amount of tank that you can put on uh, to a skiff. Yeah. So any uh, thing to the barge section, uh, Nick? Now I think we're good. Um, yeah, and we're going to probably need you to close that piece of your stream because it's messing with your voice. Um, you're, you're getting robotic on us. How's it now? Is it good? Okay, so uh, we're seeing right now we're moving on to uh, the other few ships that are heavily affected uh, by the changes from last Tuesday's patch. And now we're looking at the industrial command ships. Uh, so we're looking at the Orca and the Purpose. So we're going to start with the Orca here. Nick, can you hear me? Just double checking. Oh, yep, we can still uh, hear you. Okay. okay, yeah. Okay, so with the Orca, um, 
things is not the brightest color like we saw in the barter section, right? Both the workout and the roll call got somewhat of a nerf. Uh, more or less, that depends on your thought, your uh, what's your play style in the game, things like that. But this is this got a nerf. Uh, that's the common um, conclusion that people have. So with that, we're not seeing a the same thing for the. Um, Barters or the consumers that we're seeing a spike in price. No, we're not. Uh, but what we're seeing is um, it's a steady price right now at the end, the tail end. We saw a decline around the same time uh, the, bar uh, the consumers got uh, a spike. So I think that's a drop that people are seeing. Oh, this is um, this is not going to be a bright future for the worker. But at the end, maybe people thinking, yeah, we still need that support role, uh, in, at least in high sec, to, to be able to uh, give those uh, exhumers a boost uh, for them to have a better yield, right? So we have to wait and see uh, on the worker market to if, if they're actually going to drop or it's going to stay around uh, the same price here. I think as the T2 industrial core, large industrial core, comes down in price, we'll probably see the Orca stable out. And my rationale on that <clears throat> is I was out doing some testing. And if you just take your Orca and throw out some mining drones on a you know high sec moon, an R4 moon, in one minute, each of those five drones are going to come back with six units of, of uh, the moon R4, uh, you know, moon ore. Just turning... The uh, T1 industrial core with skill at four does 2.3 times. So each one of them comes back with 14 units. So hell of an increase. The T2 core is going to bring it dang near back up to where it was at, if not equal to uh, what it was at, you know, uh, pre pre patch times. Um, I personally see the role of that small group mining foreman becoming more important in that support role. And, you know, the heavy water thing so far, you know, because it reduces the higher your skill is. And, you know, it's, I thought it was going to be bad. And it's not what I thought it was. So it's, it's definitely doable. Um, you know, if you happen to ice mine also on the side, then you're going to be fine. Well, people who don't know, Worka got a new core. I think we just said it. Um, it's a large industrial core, and it actually uses heavy water, just like the capital version uh, that's on uh, the Oracle. So, I mean, it, Worka, I don't think it has a dedicated hole for, uh, for its fuel like the Oracle. A Oracle has a fuel bay because it's cattle ships when you jump around, but we're not seeing like a, uh, a fuel bay for the Orca. But think, oh yeah, wait, no, never mind. There is, there is a jump uh, fuel bay capacity. Never mind. So this actually has a dedicated fuel bay for it. So which means that heavy water shouldn't be a big problem, right? With um, it's a it's a scale that you're seeing right now, five percent reduction at every level uh, to its fuel consumption. Uh, so I think is um, I mean with it's going down it's definitely going to help but again this is the same theory that I have for both the Orca and the Roco people who have enough money to purchase a 1.6 billion Orca will have enough money to buy like 1.5 uh, 150 million core like you're, you're, if you're spending so much money on a ship then these modules shouldn't be that big of a problem but again I think uh, to your point, Nick, it's definitely going to help when the price is going to go down for the industrial cores. Yeah. And hey, also, um, on in the chat, hey, Space Gator, you said, I wonder if the new indie ship cores drop. You're talking about in price? or But anyway, when you get a chance, answer that because you got me curious again. Also, I lost my train of thought, so I'll shut up. <laughs> Uh, we, we, we'll get it back. Uh, so another thing with the workout is unlike the barges where you have strip miners, right? Uh, but the workout only can, can only mine with drones, right? So with that, uh, with the patch uh, that came through last Tuesday, uh, drone, drone mining didn't get 
the right nerve in terms of their yield uh, and and their ability to mine. But what what's added is the residue, which is like the waste system um, to the drones. So right now, drones, if you mine, there's going to be a complicated waste system. If you want to know more things about it, look at yesterday's episode or uh, I think on this weekend, uh, on the last weekend episode where uh, people were talking about it uh, on the show. It's a really great way to understand the new residue uh, system. But basically, do my angle nerfed, work angle nerfed. Uh, so overall, the ship is not as great, I would say, to to a lot of aspects uh, compared to before, but in terms of junk mining, uh, but what is better right now is the burst uh, with support roles at this place. It's a better supporter, but not as good as a miner. Ah, I know what I was going to mention before. Um, one of the things that finally was released, I want to say it was yesterday. Yeah, with the Tuesday update, um, the gas harvester for the barges and exhumer that blueprint finally dropped so it's not that expensive so you know a lot of folks did pick that up already i got a, i've got them in researching now right now barges unlike before where you can only mine wars you can also mine gas right now so it's, it's more versatile right maybe a wormhole group to some degree maybe to, to want to adopt that maybe people in nostec who have those constellations in their regions i uh, want to buy a few more purchases to to mine out those gases response right but those gases first of all it got double demand uh, and it's still in high demand with those battleships with those capital ships that are being built right now um, is uh, is definitely a great addition to the project's ability um, to mine things. Cool. Good to go there. Of, yeah, we're looking at the price of a porpoise. Uh, so the porpoise uh, is like, uh, it's on the same level as, uh, well, it's, it's on the same category as the worker, I should say. Uh, that it's also an industrial commandship, but is nowhere near the price or the size of a worker. So you, this is the way that I put it. Um, uh, so the worker is like a battleship, but the purple is more like a battle cruiser or cruiser version of the mining series. It is battle cruiser size in uh, tonnage and warp it's true downside in my opinion as a uh, command ship now it's good for you know as you're just stepping into the role um is the fleet hanger is only 5000 m3 so it's real hard to you know if you're supporting folks you're dragging a lot and they're going to fill you up rather quickly and then with max skills you're uh, material hold of mined materials is comes out at 65,000 M or excuse me 62,500 I believe is where it maxes out so it's just a little bit anemic on the cargo capacity specifically the mining hold itself and its fleet hanger I think the personally I think the fleet hanger is the the biggest drawback on it 5,000 M3 fleet hanger is just tiny if it were, you know, 10 or, you know, any reasonable increase, I think that would make it a much more attractive possibility. Yeah. Uh, also, with uh, talking about the fleet hangar, uh, what's also missing on the purpose compared to the Orca is a ship maintenance bay, uh, which means that the Orca can carry like extra mining ships or extra industrial ships in its uh, my, uh, ship maintenance bay, but the purpose doesn't have that thing. So, this may come handy during a gank. So, this is like a small story that I have uh, that happened to me, which is like, uh, I was finding in the uh, Orca and in the, uh, I think, a Retriever um, back in today, like not a long time, but a decent one time ago. And there was a catalyst right on my face uh, on the Retriever. So, what I did it was right click my Orca, put ship in the ship main space. I was half shield on the Retriever and the ship was saved. 
right away. And the next thing I did was pull my drones on the on the worker and everything was saved. So that kind of thing, first of all, you need to react very quickly. And second of all, you really need a ship maintenance bay uh, on the on the worker uh, in order to perform that kind of action. Well, if you look at, <clears throat> like one of the things I like to do in the Orca is I carry two hacks with me, you know, so just just in case. And then my Exumer, I got two, a couple of Exumer pilots who's ever closest <clears throat> can just swap ships. Now with the Porpoise only being a battle cruiser size, what do you fleet, you know, a uh, ship maintenance bay, what do you put in there, a uh, rookie ship or a shuttle? Really couldn't make a ar good argument for anything much bigger than that. And also, I mean, it, it doesn't have as many bays as the worker. It's, it's not as big as the worker. But what is what it sells as is its ability. It's very agile, right, compared to the worker. Uh, it doesn't have a core, first of all, right. The worker nowadays, it can. Well, I will say it can only perform well. But if you really want get the max potential out of a worker, uh, the best way is to put a large industrial core too. On the worker, that means it's in uh it's in mobile for two. So, uh, for 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 five minutes, but probably it doesn't have that. So, which means that it can align really out really fast. Oh yeah, definitely in comparison, that's for darn sure. I hey, I'm gonna recommend uh, Mr. Shen there that you go ahead and stop sharing that particular screen. It's just wrecking havoc on your voice. Um, so other than that, anything on the, uh, industrial command ship section? No, nothing from me. Okay. Um, other than that, I think, um, the next thing I think we can move on to is ship, uh, equipment, which is in this case is going to be, uh, the harvest equipment. I mean, as we all know at this point, um, the strip miners got changed uh, from uh, last week's patch. So uh, the crystals got changed and the, the, the miners got changed too. Uh, one of the things that really I want to draw people's attention to is the ore strip miner. Game, um, was, yeah, for late game player who have a lot of money wants to put really min max on uh, uh, their. Uh, Exumers, right? Or Hulk or a Machina, for example. Um, the best thing to do is to put a Wall Street Miner because it has no residue and it has the ability to use those crystals, right? Those Type B, type A crystals. Um, so what we're seeing is right here a giant spike. Uh, I, well, I don't the think the, the ore does not use crystals, though. They don't? I no, no. They, hit the, hit the just... info and use oh, the. Never no, mind. it's just straight out. Yeah. It's basically like the uh, T1, straight up one, but it it just mines a heck of a lot more, and uh, you know, and the no residue thing, which is always helpful. So I mean, we can compare this right now, right here. Uh, that the mining amount, uh, the highest out of all, I mean, this is counting without crystals, of course, uh, is the warship miners, right? And it has no residue multiplier, unlike the other two. Right? So yeah, that's, for the other that's T2 a big version. One. Yeah, for the other two versions, there's a chance um, if you use, rest, let's say, T, uh, type B crystal, there's actually a decent amount of chance that we hit a cycle with residue, which means that the, yeah, and this, uh, uh, the rock is going to get yeah. wasted. I'll have to say that uh, this particular comparison chart, uh, when you're talking a module like the modulated strip miner two that uses crystals, if you don't put crystals in there, then you're going to look at you know 480 M three a cycle with a T two crystal in there, and uh, you know a type A T two crystal and solid skills, you're looking at over 2300 M three per laser. 
So this is just without any skills, without any animals loaded in. This is just uh, the thing itself, just the module itself. Uh, so being said, also when you look at the price comparison, it's just an estimate, but uh, we can really see the amount of uh, difference in terms of price uh, that we're seeing between the, the so fashion one and the T2 one. Right? It's over 200 million. That's a price of exhumer almost um, for just one module, right? This is really, really some like heavy, heavy end game toy that some people, um, some people uh, buy. Yeah, so, so another thing that we can uh, look at is the T2 version, of course. Um, so with the modulated strip minor 2, uh, we can also see like a, uh, a spike in both volume and in uh, the price right here. Uh, yeah, that's that's you're only going to be going mercoxic with that bad boy anyway, and its price yeah. has been pretty stable, actually coming down nicely, but it is up from where it was in January. Yeah, <clears throat> which um, I find, which I find interesting, considering how much folks have been saying, you know, Mercoxic's not worth it anymore, and blah 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 blah. blah. Yeah, so I mean, the last big uh, in terms of equipment or anything that we're gonna look at is the trunks. So mine trunks, compared to the uh, uh, street miners, you got a nerf, a direct nerf. Uh, so well, in other Again, not in terms of yield, but in terms of is uh, residue. So right now we're seeing the T2 version. Uh, so the T1 version, no matter if it's civilian or not, uh, I think there's no residue at all. But with the T2 one, there is actually a residue. So it is, there's a chance you're going to waste something um, once the cycle is complete. Uh, and then this also carries uh, to uh, to the price of augmented mining drone as well. So we're seeing uh, the giant landslide uh, price bidding here at the end uh, in December uh, for the augmented mining drone. When what when we when the dev block was first announced, we know that uh, the fashion mining drones will have like one of the highest mining uh, residue uh, that's possible other than type three crystals. So I think that's why a lot of people are still, uh, I mean, at, at final block is still this, uh, similar stuff, right? This, uh, the really on the nerve to show mining. Uh, so that's what we're seeing here. And it's a similar story to uh, the excavator mining drill as well. Yeah, that price has dropped off a cliff here lately, but, you know, kind of understandable uh, with, you know, the hit it's taken in capability. So I, I kind of get that one. Uh, so other than this, uh, there's one more thing I want to show, which is... Uh, which is decayed, uh, let, let, let me try to find it. It should be right here. Wait. While he's looking that up, everybody, put your guess in chat of what you think he's going for. Yeah, that was my cheesy game show host voice, sorry.
the DK Siege module uh, Muta Plus Nuts, you're right. <laughs> uh, so uh, the only thing I want to show here is remember that one day where it, there's an exploit notification uh, with the Abyssal Siege module? Uh, we're, so I just want to show them uh, on the in terms of market. Uh, on that one day, 167 of them were sold. Uh, so this is like a really cheap thing, um, like 20 million, that you can turn your T2 Siege module uh, into a pistol one, which means that you can put it on your Titan. Right? It doesn't matter if it's good, it is, if it's a gravid or an unstable one, it just means that you, can, you're, you have the ability right now to put it on uh, on Titan, on Arbitrar, for example. So uh, that's why we're seeing a giant spike in volume on that day, and then we're seeing some like turbulence, uh, turbulence after that, we're seeing the price going a bit up right here. Uh, but overall, uh, it's just that one day that's I'm trying to get that. Yeah, 167 sold on that one day. So it's just, it is just uh, a big price there, a big, a big volume there. Um, anything uh, you want to uh, you want to say uh, for this second? Uh, nope, nope. I'll save it for the final thoughts. Okay. Uh, so I guess this is, will be it. So, like, anything for the show or anything like that? I guess I'll just do this. Uh, so. Yeah, so I guess this is it. Anything? Any like this will be your closing? Any last words or anything like that? Yeah, my uh, I, about the only thing I can, you know, I, I probably have mentioned it once or twice already in this particular uh, little stream we're doing, but a skilled mining foreman that actually knows how to run a mining fleet, um, not just, you know, oh yeah. I, I injected the skills so I can fly the Orca or the Rourke or whatever. But someone who actually knows how to be a mining foreman that has the skills and the ship, I think is going to be a quite a valuable asset to your small group or mid-sized group in the very near future, if not already. Right on. Uh, I mean, that's it. Uh, so... Today was Wednesday, December 15th. Uh, this has been Talking Stations. I'm your host, Shen. Good night. All right. Night, everybody.